Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you haven't been to my channel before, my name is Rachel Ost, and today I'm doing a Q&A. As always, I think intros for these are pretty pointless, so I'm gonna jump straight in and ask you guys my question first. So, if you were to jump on a plane tomorrow, like just spur of the moment, you got given a ticket, where would you want that to be to? The first place that popped into my head is Japan, and that's only because I'm going there in October, so I'm just super excited. Do you have an area in your house that you can't keep clean? Love the videos, thank you. Um, probably the main area that we struggle with the most, like we have to keep on top of it consistently, is the kitchen, and that's just because it's a high traffic area and we're always cooking something. Oh, especially after meal preps. You guys should see it after I like meal prep, and even when I film one of my meal prep videos afterwards, it's just an absolute bomb site. Do you have a video about how to foam roll? No, but I have a blog post and I'll link it in the description. Have you ever been in a rut? You seem so put together, but I'm wondering if you've ever lost motivation and if so, how did you get it back? Um, this kind of ties in with another question that I had, so let me find where that one went. Um, what kind of mental or emotional exercises do you do when you find yourself stalled creatively or even personally? Are you a spiritual person? Spiritual person? Um, were you a professional photographer before you started designing and YouTube? I'll kind of answer those two together because they're similar. Um, not a spiritual person. I was raised in like a Christian household. I went to a Christian school from preschool until year 12 and it's just... It's never clicked with me, I never really got it. And of course I can get in ruts and stuff. I like to try and be as productive as possible, but some days it's just not happening and I'll be halfway through the day and then all of a sudden I'm like, no, my day is over today. I find myself um, creatively if I'm in a bit of a rut or if I'm stuck, I have to look outside of what I'm doing. Uh, an example for me is because I like photos and I like videos, I'm gonna go and I'm not going to look at other YouTubers' videos or I'm not going to go and look at professional photographers' photos because that's probably just going to make me feel even more stuck. So what I would tend to do is go and look at people's drawings or look at tattoo artists' work or stream a fashion show online, something like that. I like to look at other people's creative work that's not necessarily from the same genre as my own because I feel like I can take more away from looking at someone's work that's very different to mine than I can from looking at someone who's doing something very similar to me. Um, as for the professional photographer question, I did study photography and I was working as a fashion and beauty photographer. Um, I did that for a while, eventually I grew tired of it, took on an office job and then like ended up starting Eat Run Lift while I was working there and then I just flew on from there. Have you had any plastic surgery? I haven't had plastic surgery as such, but this is definitely not my natural face. Uh, even little things like for example, you can probably see my eyebrows are super super dark today and that's just because I got the microblading like feather touch tattoos just redone again about three days ago so they're still pretty dark. I'm not gonna lie and say that this is my natural face but at the same time I thought about making a video about it but I don't know, I feel like so many people do that just to make money from a video talking about that kind of thing because it's very clickbaity and it's very controversial but I don't want to influence anyone to feel like they have to change how they look and I know some people are just curious and they just want to know but at the same time if I made a video talking about stuff I've had done even if it's just like oh I constantly have eyelash extensions on etc um advertently or inadvertently I might be you know telling someone you know the way your eyelashes are aren't good isn't good enough or something like that, and I don't want anyone to have to feel like they have to change something. What's your opinion on waist trainers? Mm, don't even bother wasting your money. What is your fitness goal? I guess it's like a health and fitness goal, and at the moment it is to get my hormones back where they need to be. So I finally, 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 after years of struggling with my hormones and always carrying like extra weight on my arms or, you know, taking a long time to progress with my fitness, like I get really strong, but you wouldn't be able to see that very well externally. We finally found out like what is wrong with me, I guess you call it. So I'm gonna do up a whole video on that, but I'm, I'm glad, <laughs> like, it sucks, but I'm glad that I know now. So I'll fill you guys in when I can. Why no family photos? I know what my family looks like and it's another thing to clean. Shallow question, your hair, were the grey streaks hard to achieve? No, because they are blonde extensions that have been dyed black and then grey and then we, so they're show pony extensions, which means they have a really, really narrow band and we've just put them through uh, it depends, like when I'm moving you can see it a lot better, but we'll just like put them through my hair um, mainly toward the front because the cut is shorter at the back and a little bit longer at the front. Don't go destroying your hair. If you, if you have black hair, especially if you have box dyed black hair, don't go destroying it trying to get it light, especially not in one hit, you will fry your hair. non shelly question, do you tend to feel anxious in the minimalist lifestyle or sort of agitated with trying to keep things neat? I'm trying to go down that path, but things don't seem to fall, place into easily, uh, fall into place as easily. 
Um, no, I tend to get anxious when there is stuff lying around and when things are messy. Like having the clutter around makes me feel really like, oh, like can't breathe, can't function properly. I feel like I can get a lot more work done and I'm calmer when everything is neat. Just take your baby steps, like little things at a time. Don't worry about having to have everything like perfectly wired and clear and clean. That's not necessarily what minimalism is about. Like, yeah, there is that cool aesthetic trend of it going around, but it should be about just reducing your consumption and just owning what you need. You don't have to make drastic changes. You don't have to do it overnight. You can just do it little bit by little bit. Um, I do have that 60 day minimalism challenge. I'll link that in the description box as well. Uh, if you are new to it or if you find that you're struggling or you're stuck, follow that and it'll give you like 60 days worth of activities to do. Style inspirations. I'll pop two pictures up on the screen here. I definitely don't dress like either of these people, but I find that a style inspiration doesn't necessarily have to be someone that you emulate or someone that you copy. Like, I feel it's cool to just do my own thing, but I'm inspired by people like this. How do you stay positive all the time with a heavy workload and busy schedule? I've been getting really tired lately and depressed. I'm just trying to figure out some ways to stay happy. Love your videos, you're such an inspiration. Thank you. Um, I don't think anyone, like, anyone can stay positive and happy 100% all of the time. I think it's important to know what your limitations are, know when you need a break, and realize that you do have to take some time to have that rest. You can't just shove everything in and stress yourself out. If you want to create a busy schedule, make sure you're making time for yourself to actually have downtime as well. Make sure, of course, that you're doing the very basic things, like getting enough sleep, uh, drinking enough water and eating enough good food as well. You want to fuel your body properly to be able to get a lot of stuff done during the day. But it is a very unrealistic expectation to think that you can stay upbeat and positive absolutely all of the time. I definitely can't. I've never met anyone who can. And by putting that expectation on yourself, you are going to stress yourself out even more. If you're feeling a little bit sad, you're going to be like, oh no, I can't feel like this and that's going to stress you. You have to remember that emotions are fleeting and that there's something that you have to live through and if you're sad that day you're sad that day just do what you can and if you're happy that day that's awesome you can try and get even more stuff done but i think my ability to get a lot of things done regardless of what emotion that i'm in relies more on the fact that you know i have my list of things to do and i know what i need to get done throughout the day but i allow myself to kind of go through those emotions and i go okay well i'm not feeling that great today i'm not in a very chatty mood so I'm just gonna leave my emails today and I'll do them tomorrow. And today I'm just gonna do the things that allow me to sit and be alone and you know, like editing or something like that. But I do have that luxury of being able to move my schedule around like that. And I understand that not everybody does. If you have someone that you can talk to, tell them like, hey, I'm not feeling that great today and just have a little chat with them about it. You don't have to go on and on for hours. It could just be something quick, something little that's bothering you. But if you vocalize it, it will tend to appear less big in your mind. Do you not have urges to wear something colourful? No. Just love your videos. Thank you. They're so inspiring and calming. How's your stomach and intestines because of problems with gluten? Um, I have to get another test done, I'm pretty sure, but probably too much information, but I was getting like internal bleeding and stuff like that. That has completely stopped, which is awesome. Um, my skin was getting really, really inflamed as well, and I was like, what the hell is happening? Didn't realize why I was, you know, I was getting these stomach cramps and stuff like that. So my skin has calmed down a lot, and then I've had to do another bit of a diet tweak again since I found out exactly what's wrong with my hormones. Again, we'll cover that in another video, but my stomach is definitely feeling a lot better. Um, I'm not feeling as bloated at all, and I'm not feeling tired. I think that was one of the big things that I noticed was when I was having problems with gluten and I didn't know what problems I was having. I was consistently run down, like I was still trying to get a lot of stuff done, but I was so tired and my energy levels were just like down here all the time and now they're just like, woo. Why don't you wear jewelry? Well, I don't like most jewelry. The jewelry that I do like is like big stacked chunky rings, but I can't wear that because I train, you know, I train twice a day. And when I'm doing weightlifting, you're often, you know, going hands around a bar or something like that. And you can't really do that with a lot of rings on. And that's the kind of style that I like for jewelry. But I do have my tattoos and that sort of thing. And they're like my decoration, I guess you'd call it. I guess jewelry is just not really my thing. Like I'd love to be able to do the chunky ring thing all the time, but it's just not practical for my lifestyle. All right, so that's all that I have time for in this video. Don't forget to leave me the answer to my question in the comments below. If you are new, don't forget to hit subscribe and we can be friends and I will catch all of you guys in my next video. Bye.